lupus cancerous thyroid part nine. Um, hopefully you can hear me. Um, I, I didn't really check the last one to see if I was very hearable, but hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you can hear me and I guess I have a giant set on the side of my nose. <laughs> um, this one, warning, um, I might cry. I've been crying, um, a little bit off and on throughout the day. First time I've really done so since, um, since the diagnosis outside of, like, the little bit of crying on a couple of previous videos. Um, but this... Today has been a hard day. Um, so, today was my one week um, post-op appointment with my surgeon. And so, he asked me to, well I came in for, for my own appointment. Um, they took off the stereo strips. I'm not gonna like show it off, but uh, I'm not wearing a bandana. Won't always be the case. I'm still really self conscious about it, and there's stitches, which I didn't anticipate there being stitches underneath the stereo strips. So, <laughs> that's a little weird. And it hurt when he dug them off. Because when I got another stereo strips removed, um, my doctors used. Um, like a, a sticky stuff remover so it doesn't hurt as much. It comes off nicer. And it came off well enough, but it did hurt. <laughs> um, and, uh, then I got some not so great news. Um, we had previously thought that the uh, cancer was contained, that it was only the right lobe, and that it had not metastasized to any of my lymph nodes. According to the pathology results after the surgery, um, it was both my right and, lymph right and left lobe of my thyroid that were cancerous. Um, it had metastasized to um, six of the lymph nodes behind my thyroid, which were removed. So the hope is that that has taken care of any cancer. Um, if not, then I will have to do the radioiodine treatment. Um, which means spending at least a week away from people on a no iodine diet um, because radio iodine is supposed to be taken up by your thyroid cells but if you're taking in iodine then it kind of defeats the purpose and um, radio iodine makes you radioactive which is why you can't be around people while you're doing radio iodine. <laughs> I hope that that will not be the case. I find out the week that my parents come into town for their um, summer visit. Uh, I find out August 17th whether or not I will need to to do further treatments. Um, then the other bit of not so great news. I don't know why this one makes me more emotional. <laughs> well, I do because I was finally getting to a point in my life where I felt confident enough in myself and in my singing ability to. to sing in front of people. Um, outside of just choir, but also to do solos and and to just to exhibit 
the talent that I knew that I had, that I knew for a long time that I had, but I wasn't, but I wasn't using. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> But my doctor was concerned today when he saw, or when he heard, that uh, my voice had not recovered. Because usually, by now, the swelling's gone down um, enough for the voice to at least recover more than it has. So it wasn't a good sign. And, um, so, uh... He took a look at my voice box and it looks like some of the muscles on the left side are pretty weak. Um, not the muscles, but just it's not, it's not uh, vibrating the way that it should. Um, it's weak, but it's, it's working, which is a slightly good sign. Um, but it should be working better by now, which is why it's a concern. And, um, so he told me that the next two to three months will show whether or not my voice will recover. And if it doesn't recover, there are a couple of options for things we can do to um, help it to artificially recover. Um, the first option is a shot. Um, I don't know exactly what kind of shot. I think he said I had to be under anesthesia for the shot. Um, I was in a little bit of shock at the time, but uh, basically a shot that would um, that would help that side of my voice box to vibrate correctly um, and uh, restore a little bit of normalcy back to my voice. The shot would then last for approximately a year and after a year um, if the shot was successful um, then it would be time to get an implant to permanently, um, normalize my voice. But with both of these steps, it would not be the same voice that I previously had. And, um, that was just really hard for me to hear. I know it seems like a silly thing, and I know a lot of people are going through things that are worse, but, uh, I just, I talk every day at my job, I sing along to songs, I laugh, I have fun, all those things, and now those things feel like they've been ripped away from me. And that's just really hard. I mean, I don't even know how I'm going to be able to do my job or where I talk all day long extensively um, without without there being a problem. <laughs> And I'm just not sure, I'm not sure I haven't talked to them about what kind of accommodations could be made or, or, you know, what. So, it just feels like this is going to create some really big changes in my life. And, uh, that's, uh, that's hard. So, um, uh, 
But yeah, I'm just not sure what I'm going to do about that, except to just uh, follow what the doctor recommends and hope it comes back. Because I really don't like sounding like I'm whispering all the time or straining to talk and it's hard. I mean, I could get used to it if I had to, but, um, it would feel like a loss. A loss of a part of me. A part of me that was becoming a bigger part of my life. So. <laughs> but, um, anyway, I don't know. My coping mechanism, I uh, turned to television as I usually do and ended up watching some Ellen, you know, and, and uh, laughing at uh, the funny things she does and all the kind things she does for people. She has such a big heart, she's so nice. and. Um, you know, I just, um, so I did mention last time, but, uh, on the day of my surgery, I opened up the care package that my best friend, one of my best friends, Katie, sent to me, and, um, part of the care package was daily quotes, and, um, today's daily quote was something that I really needed to hear and of course it was changed to my daughter instead of my son but uh my daughter peace be unto thy soul thine adversity and thine afflictions shall be but a small moment and then if thou endure well God shall exalt thee on high and thou shalt triumph over all thy foes so I guess that's what I wanted to leave everyone with tonight. That, um, uh, today was hard, but tomorrow will be a better day. And as long as I endure this well, I will, I will get through things. I will I'll get through it all. I have love and support around me. I have a wonderful aunt who's been so helpful. She took me to the temple tonight, which is actually where the tears started. So, not her fault. <laughs> Just, uh, the temple is where I feel closer to God. I felt like he was telling me that it was time to let some of that go. That it was okay to cry. Because sometimes you just need to cry. But, um, also that it's okay to that I could find peace, and that I could move on, that I could be better. I'm grateful for my parents. Um, they are such a wonderful support to, to me, and I'm so glad to have my mom here. She left on Sunday, but it was really great to have her here for the first part of the recovery process. And that just, um, no. Oh. Shows off my scar, sorry. It just feels good to know I have a support system around. I don't want to show it off. <laughs> but, um, and my little sister, who we haven't always had a great relationship, but, um, has been so supportive through all of this and. Through her, my mom was able to make it here. Through her job as a flight attendant, and I might be able to um, go home for the radio iodine treatment if it's needed. Uh, and I also, she's coming down in September, so it'll be good to see her. Uh, and uh, yeah, and um. My best friend Sarah, who I know would love to be here for me, and I'm really grateful for that. 
Um, but everything happens for a reason, and I know that there are good reasons why she can't be here. And the same goes for Katie, my other best friend, and I know that she's been so supportive and so helpful. And just, uh, everybody, I, I just feel surrounded by love. Um, I had really great friends come down all the way for Provo and visit last night and um, chat with me and just cheer me up and keep me occupied and everything. It was really good to see all of them and to have people come down and say hi and show how much they are thinking of me and all of that. So just so grateful for everyone around me who's been so supportive and I I know I will get through this. My tribulations for shall be for but a small moment. And I can get through it because I have a wonderful support system. And most of all I have the support of my Heavenly Father and His Son Jesus Christ. And I know that through them I can do anything that I need to do. So I will get through this. I'm sorry. But that's what I want everyone to take from it. Is that hard things happen. And we learn and we grow. And we become better people. Because of the things that happen to us. So. Tomorrow is a new day. Tomorrow will hopefully be a tear-free day. <laughs> no guarantees. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Um, it'll be okay. I know it will. And, uh, thank you for everyone for your support. just I needed to worry for a little bit and hopefully tomorrow I'll be done worrying because <laughs> there's nothing I can do about it for now I can keep exercising my voice and I'm going to go back to work next week if they'll let me and uh, just do everything that I need to do so that's all I can do right Anyway, have a good week, night, whatever.